So to start, we're going to remove our Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 2 gigabyte RAM computer. And before we get started, an important and intelligent thing to do is to take a look at the quick start guide that came with each one of your kits. It has very helpful information such as the layout of your board or the CPU, the RAM, the Wi-Fi controller. It also has helpful information on the general purpose input output pins, the GPIO pins that we'll be using here in a moment. Uh, and it's has some great information that will help you in getting started. So, taking a look at your Raspberry Pi, we have uh, some key features. You have your uh, camera in ribbon connector. You have your uh, video screen out ribbon connector. We'll be using that in just a moment. Your 40 general purpose input output GPIO pins. An ethernet port. So if you don't have Wi-Fi at home, you need to connect this to the internet. That's, a, uh, that's how you do that. If you do have Wi-Fi, disregard this port altogether. And then four USB cable ports, uh, USB-A connectors, and we'll be using those a little bit in a minute. So to get started, we are going to take our Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display. Take that out of the box. And you will see it comes with a ribbon cable, GPIO cables, and some mounting screws. And you take your screen out of its protective shielding. See, you have the screen on one side with a protective film. On the other side, you have the control board. On the control board, there are these input tines. That's what we'll be working with with the GPIO. And then you also have the ribbon cable connector. We'll be working with both of these. There's also a, a power output, the USB-A power output. We won't be using that at all. So to get started with this, first, we're going to take our ribbon cable. You'll see that there's a blue side and a silver side. The silver side is your contact side. It is always going to go towards the white or the light side and away from the black uh, clip connector. Okay, so when we go to connect this to the screen, you want your silver portion facing up towards you and you just gently slide it into that connector. Once you have it in there, you wanna take your two fingers and just gently close, slide in that dark connector. Okay, if you do it correctly, it won't slide out. You wanna make sure that it's nice and flush and that it's not um, canted or, or sliding out. Next, you can take your GPIO connectors. Have a red one and a black one. Following sort of power convention, red is power, black is ground. You look on your GPIO tines, the one that says five volt, and plug your red connector in. And then look for the one that says GND, that stands for ground. Plug in your black connector. We won't be using the other three pins. Okay, then going over to our um, Raspberry Pi, you'll notice that there are four mounting holes they correspond with the four standoff pins that are on the screen, on the, the controller board. And when we're finally done, your board will sit right on top like this, okay? But before we go there, we're going to find our firmware load. So just like Windows or Mac OS run your computers at home, this SD card is loaded with a version of Linux, which is similar to, to Windows, and it has, this has your, your firmware on it. This, you're going to put in the SD card slot on the bottom of your Raspberry Pi. So taking the SD card with the 
print facing you and the gold contacts facing away from you. You face the gold contacts towards the board and just slide it in, okay? Flip that back over. We're gonna find the ribbon cable connector at the foot of the board here. We're gonna gently slide out the black connector. And then we're gonna slide in the ribbon connector. So the silver contacts will face the white contact board. Slide that in just like you did with the control board on the screen. Slide it all the way in until it stops and then gently slide the black connector clip back down. Okay. Some light tension, make sure that it's seated properly. And then we're gonna to go to connecting our GPIO cables. Now going back to our quick start guide, go to page 11, and you can see the GPIO schematic. This lays out just like your board. The 40 pins here correspond to the 40 pins here, and you can see what each one of the pins do. Obviously we need a five volt pin to connect this cable to, and a ground to connect this cable to, and so we find that pin number two, right up here in the top left, is a five volt pin. So we'll connect that there. And number six, so the third from the top left, is a ground. And we'll connect that one right there. Okay, now we have power to our screen. We have data going through the ribbon cable to the screen and now we can take the silver screws out of our board out of our bag and mount them to the board you don't want to use a lot of torque on this just gently tighten them down if you tighten them too far, you might crack the board. So just secure. And as we're doing this, you'll notice some other features on the board. There's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here if you want to install some old headphones. Uh, you have the 3 volt USB or the USB C 5 volt connector. That's where you're powering the board. We'll get to that in a minute. And then we also have two micro HDMI ports here. So if you wanna plug this board into a larger monitor, that's how you do that. Okay, so now we have our board mounted to our screen. We have the ribbon cable installed. It's nice and secure. We have the GPIO cables connected. And we also have the SD card installed with our firmware. So next, we're gonna remove our protective case with its mounting screws. When you look at the mounting, the protective case, there are ports on one side, ports on the top, no ports on the other side. These ports on the one side can uh, correspond to these connectors, and these on the top can correspond to these. So we're just going to pull these GPI cables a little out of the way, lay this case on top and then we're going to line up these four mounting screws I'm using the black screws that come with this protective case we're just going to start mounting the case to the screen We're done with that. We have a fully assembled Raspberry Pi computer with compute and monitor. You've got your connections on the one side, 
connections on top. And if you need access to the board itself, this back panel slides right off and you can access all your GPIO and other connectors inside. Don't need to do that right now. Next, we're going to connect the keyboard. So your official Raspberry Pi keyboard. Open this up. You have a keyboard, a USB cable, very simple. Untie the USB cable, micro USB on one side, USB A on the other. USB A goes into one of your USB A ports on the back, micro USB goes into the micro USB port on the keyboard. There, now your keyboard is installed. Next, our mouse. Similar to the keyboard, USB-A port to USB-A port. Now we have a mouse. And last but not least, your power supply. This is a standard five volt USB-C power supply. Comes with your kit. USB-C connector on one side, power on the other. Plug that power supply into your local outlet. And with your kit comes a very convenient uh, on-off switch. So those of you who may have used Pis in the past, the typical way of doing this is just unplug your Pi. This on-off switch makes things much more convenient. So plug the USB-C cable from the power supply into the on-off switch and toggling that on off button on the top will tell you whether or not it's properly powered, which this one is. We'll turn that off, plug it into the USB-C port on the top of your computer, and then all is left to do is to press that power button. And if everything's connected correctly, your Pi will start booting up and you'll get this beautiful rainbow screen that indicates that your Pi is running properly. Give it a moment and we will boot right up to the Raspberry Pi interface. And here we are on the Raspberry Pi desktop. See my mouse works keyboard works, and this seven inch touchscreen is actually a touchscreen. So if you don't want to use your mouse, you can actually just use the touchscreen.